So now that we have that, we are still using the door handle, still the active component. We are gonna start creating our forms. Now forms is this purple sort of divided box here. You can see that it's called create form. And this brings us into the sculpt environment. The sculpt workspace is not here by default unless you are working with an inserted or an imported component. It can only be achieved by going to create and we're gonna create this form. And that way we're gonna see what other tool sets we have available to us. You'll notice that when you get in here, it says that you've entered the sculpt environment. Uh, in order to exit, you'll have to use the finished form, very similar to exiting a sketch. Uh, that's okay, it just tells us that we're sort of in this separate world, a separate environment. So once we're in here, what do we do? What tools do we have available to us? Well, you'll notice that we have a few very familiar looking things. Sketch, construct, uh, inspect, insert, and select. These are all the same menus with a few minor exceptions. There are some differences that happen in here like uh, insert T-splines, insert mesh, things like that. We're not gonna talk about those. They're kind of outside the scope of what we're doing here, but um, just note that there are some different options sometimes, but things like inspect and construct and sketch are gonna be uh, exactly the same. You'll notice some things are grayed out because we don't have any sketches yet, but uh, exactly the same as in the model or the patch workspace. The things that we wanna focus on are anything that has these purple icons, create, modify, symmetry and utilities. Uh, so these are all things that we're gonna talk about a little bit and are gonna help us figure out how to create this door handle. First, we're gonna to go to create, we're gonna use this drop down, and note that we can create a few different types of things. The first section, these are all primitives. They allow you to create basic objects, boxes, uh, spheres, cylinders, planes, that are subdivided. You, you go in and you define all the subdivisions, the sizes and everything like that. It will create the entire object for you. Uh, we also have some options to do things like uh, create a face. And then at the bottom, we have some great options that allow us to do things like loft and sweep and revolve based on sketches. Uh, so essentially you could take your sketches, create a loft or revolve and have the end result surface be subdivided. So then you can push and pull vertices and edges and faces to make something more organic. Really great way to make things like handles for different components or um, if you wanna take like pipes and, and tubes and tweak certain areas. Let's say that you're making a, a frame for a mountain bike or something like that. Uh, some very good tools for doing those types of things in here. The one that we're gonna focus on is going to be a cylinder. Uh, so we're gonna take a cylinder and we're gonna sketch this on this end face here, starting at the origin of it, and we're gonna match this shape exactly. We're gonna go right out to one inch and we're gonna start creating that shape. So you'll notice by default there are some parameters. Uh, the diameter that we drew this at was one inch, but we can manipulate that if we want. The height is automatically half inch. That'll be okay for what we're doing. We're gonna leave it at half inch. And you'll notice that we have diameter faces and height faces. So we can change these, uh, for instance, using these widgets on the screen, we can add more or less. Uh, and what this really does is it allows us to have more areas that we can push and pull. We're gonna leave the height faces at four, and we're gonna go ahead and leave the diameter faces at eight by default, but there is a widget for that as well. We can move those around, or we can manually enter those values in the dialog boxes or over here in the properties. One very important note for you that once you okay this creation dialog box for any of the primitives, you can't go back to it. These dimensions are set. If you wanna start over, you gotta delete it and draw another one. So very important that you set these original parameters up how you want them. The direction's one-sided, we're only going out one direction, that's okay. I don't want any symmetry. If you wanted symmetry, you could put a mirror symmetry and pick the direction. In this case, it would be the height symmetry. So the left and right side would be the same. Because we, I know that we wanna twist this a little bit, I don't wanna add symmetry, but those are available options. And then you only can really create a new body in here. There's not a new component. Uh, there's not joining or re removing or anything like that when you're creating a primitive like this. You're just gonna create a new body and say okay. So now once we're here, what do we have? What do we really do with this? What is a subdivided model? Well, in this case, we're dealing with the surface. Some of the other primitives like box and sphere and torus and quad ball are solids. They're completely sealed, watertight areas that 
produce a solid when you exit back into Fusion 360 model workspace. But we're dealing with a surface. We can seal it up, we can patch it, we can make it a solid. Uh, but for right now, it's just a zero thickness set of patched or subdivided surfaces. In order to manipulate this, we go to the modify section and we use edit form. Now that is the default button that's located up top. So you can simply hit edit form. And this brings in a move dialog box, a scale dialog box and a rotate dialog box all in one. And what this allows us to do is pick vertices or edges or faces or multiple faces by different variations of double clicking. We click this edge, we get a tangency edge all the way around. And then you can do things like move it or scale it in and out, um, scale it in three directions. We can do things like rotate it um, and all these different ways that we can manipulate this information. I'm going to use undo to bring it all back bring it back to the original shape and note that this was with an edge. We can do this with faces. We undo that. We can also do this with vertices and it doesn't just have to be one. We can select multiples. For instance, if we want to grab these three, we can push and pull them. And if we scale them, it'll move them apart or bring them together, scale them out in this direction. It does various things depending on what you select.